We're here with James from Shack in a Box, and he's going to tell us they, these guys make awesome ham radio go boxes. So, James, what the heck have you got here? Mike, so what we've got here, we've got uh, almost our full line here yeah. of the ICOM stuff that we do. We do ICOM, uh, Elecraft, and, and Yesu stuff. Okay. Um, this is our newest creation. It's an ICOM 705 grab and go box. It's a yep. true Shack in a Box. This will do 160 meters through 70 centimeters in one box. Yep. It has the MAT705 tuner for HF and, and six meters. And we have a diplexer in there that will split off prior to the tuner so that you can have an output for UHF, VHF. Okay. And we put in- You didn't have that in Houston, did you? No, that's, that's new. That's new. Yeah. We, we were trying to get a diplexer out of Japan. Yeah. And they stopped making them. So we found one that will fit it's big, but yeah. it does fit from Comet. Okay. It also has cool. So we've got dual ports. You can have an HF antenna and the VHF antenna plugged in at the same time. Yes. Change frequencies on the radio. You don't need to muck with antennas. Else. You're just you're just on the air and ready to go. That is awesome. So we also took care of cooling. Okay. Um, there's a fan in here that draws 5.33 cubic feet per minute okay. of of air across the radio. And as you can see, we left a, a significant um, gap there uh -huh. for air in intake. Okay. Draws across the heat sink and then spits it out with the fan. Okay. So we're not pushing the air into the box and compressing it, which would actually cause it to heat up a little bit. All right. We're drawing fresh air into the box and then spitting the hot air out. Mm -hmm. So far, we've only gotten the box up to about 118 degrees. Oh, wow. And that's in Florida last yeah. week with an ambient temperature in the mid 90s. Yeah. And then, so what, uh, as far as battery? Battery is a, a bio-NO, four and a half amp hour lithium iron phosphate. Okay. Battery. Uh, this does have the USB-C. Oh, I didn't even see that guy the, there. To talk to the radio. Um, okay. We, or USB micro. Yeah. There will be on the production version, a USB-C charging port for the mat tuner. Okay. Because it has the batteries in it now that charge with USB-C. Okay. So once every other month or so, you're gonna need to plug it in for three or four hours and yeah. charge your, your tuner up. Okay. And then we've got just regular charging in so for the that, battery. That, that, is that what that is? Charge that is a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter coaxial connector. Mm -hmm. That's the same connector that's going to come with the battery charger from BioNO. Okay. But we also have a, another device called a charge controller in a box. Okay. Which is over here. I'll show it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We took a Genesun GB5 lithium charge controller uh -huh. with a special firmware that we had to make that allows you to not only oh, use a, a solar panel that's more than five amps, uh -huh. uh, it's not gonna give more than five amps to the battery, yeah. but it allows you to put a larger solar panel without burning up your, your charge, charge okay. controller. Essentially, that's the Genesun GB5 lithium, but nice. there's a firmware also will take your battery to 14.6 volts instead of 14.2. Yeah, we talked about that in Houston yes. too, yeah. You can, you can buy this, um, I think from HRO and Gigaparts, mm -hmm. but they don't have the special firmware in it. We we have firmware that they did so that we can charge the bio battery all the so way. So theirs is only going to like 14.2, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, okay. And uh, this one will go to a true 14.6. Okay. Charge the battery all the way. And it's a CV. Uh, this looks pretty, pretty waterproof and everything it's, too, right? It's, IP68. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then that brings us on to the, the other new uh, box that we have, which is the ID5100A grab and go yeah. box. We can also do this with the, um, the 2730. Okay. And I am going to try to do one with the FTM500. Uh, I understand that the, the face panel may be a little deep. I haven't tried it yet. Yeah, I'd be curious to see how that works. So what's under the hood here is a 15 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Okay. And it's got the radio. Uh, again, we took care of cooling. Mm -hmm. uh, I have yeah. an aerospace engineer that works with me and mm -hmm. he's, he's great with fluid dynamics. We're drawing oh, wow. the air into the intake. That's metal. Yes, it is. That's eight, cool. It's eighth inch aluminum. Wow. So it's, it's, not, an, it's not a cheap panel. Right. Uh, they are done here in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, they are anodized and uh, they are robust. Yeah. We're using aviation grade hardware in there. Okay. He's an aerospace engineer. So yeah. That's what he put on the <laughs> bill of materials. You got to buy this actual nut from Aircraft Spruce and use it only 
so that you know wow you can pull it out you know take the screws out uh -huh. pull it out everything is connected to the top panel okay there are no in intrusions into the box on this one. Oh yeah the, the totally 705 sealed. does have an intrusion that we use a neoprene washer okay that makes it ip67 okay uh and we're going to try to be able to mount it everything to the, the top panel but i didn't have time I, yeah. I literally built this tuesday uh you built that Tuesday. yeah okay i mean we found, <laughs> finally found a diplexer that fit yeah so this gives you 50 watts out on uhf or vhf 35 watts out on uhf yeah it'll do d star fm mm -hmm. um like i said we can do it with the 2730a mm -hmm. and i we're going to try to do it with the yesu fdm 500. okay uh it has a, a uhf connector instead of an in connector uh -huh. um, the fuse uh is an agc glass fuse so you don't have to take the cover off oh the yeah fuse. the 705 will have that feature as well okay right now it's an inline fuse okay um but we're we're making it so you don't have to take it apart to to play with it yeah so that's the, that's awesome the next thing we're going to work on is an extension for the sd card we're going to try. Oh, yeah. Okay. We, we're, we've been playing with it. We haven't found one that works consistently. Okay. But there are some extend, extension cables for SD cards that we're going to try to put so that you can yeah, put the SD card in that's there. a great idea because then you can put all your repeater yeah. lists and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as of right now, you can program it with the RT system software using the data in Oh, okay. That's using a 2.5 millimeter TRS plug, the, the orange plug from... Uh, the orange cable from RT Systems. Yeah, okay. And I had one, and it didn't work, and Will from RT Systems came over, and he's like, I can't figure it out. He goes to the booth, got another <laughs> cable, said, hey, it works. It was there the cable. Go. I, oh, I wow. fiddled with it for a week. Uh -huh. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? Is the baud rate wrong? <laughs> but we finally got it working yesterday. That's great. And then you've so, got just a master power button here, it looks like. a push button switch. Okay. Uh, we do include on both of them uh, the voltmeter with the the thermometer as well you know? oh that's so cool let's say you, you take it out in florida or texas uh-huh 90 100 degrees outside every day you're going to get close to being at the maximum limit of the radio okay but this gives you that extra protection of knowing hey i'm getting close to 140 degrees that's a Maybe great idea no kidding all right and then these are uh down here mike these are our We've been doing them for years. Yeah. So we call this the HF-170-300. Uh -huh. We also do an HF-1710 with the EHU-710. Okay. A HF-1991, which we do with the 991A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have one of our all-in-one grab-and-go boxes. Yeah. Oh, or not grab-and-go. Uh, boxes. This one is the Icon version. has a 7300 and a 2730A. Yep. Now, I haven't been able to fit a... 5100 in here because okay. we were 3d printing our carbon fiber brackets uh-huh we're now going to go to a cnc bent um, aluminum bracket that we designed okay that will allow us to shift this radio over a little bit mm -hmm. and gives you that extra four millimeters you need to put a 5100 four millimeters in. four millimeters wow there are other people <laughs> who here at the show who have this, uh -huh. but they had to put it into a six rack unit case. Okay, yeah. We needed that room for the, to bring the radio all the way down to the shelf uh -huh. to fit the two Icon speakers in here. Yeah. So the trade-off was you couldn't put a, a 5100 in there. Mm -hmm. We're now going to be able, with the bracket we designed and they're now having made here in the United States, Yeah. it'll be a, an aluminum 6061 aluminum bracket uh -huh. uh, with um, powder coating on it, and it will have eight to ten number ten screws that go through it to hold that radio wow. down that's so it's going to in increase the integrity of the, of the shelf uh -huh. and it will allow us to shift it over just that little bit to put the 5100 yeah. in there because a okay. lot of people have asked why don't you do the 5100 sure now the next thing that has happened since i, I last saw you mm -hmm. was uh, i forget his name from viberplex came over and says why aren't you putting map tuners in there uh-huh well never tried them Okay. We, we took a couple home from Hamcation. They are very good tuners. We like them. Uh -huh. I love the LDG. Yeah. But the mat tuner is skinnier. We're now able to 3D print a bracket. Okay. And at least with, with our, our HF1s, mm -hmm. we're able to put everything on one shelf instead of having wow. the undersling 
So that's going to save several pounds off of that box over there. Oh, that's huge. So we can 3D print a carbon fiber or polycarbonate bracket. Uh -huh. And we also are doing a 710 box for somebody where we're physically mounting the speaker to that bracket. It's kind of a, wow. a cool box. It's not done yet, so we, we don't have it here to show. Yeah. But it'll be out, and we'll have pictures on our website Sweet. soon. That sounds awesome. And this is just one of our solar... Uh, you know, the buzzword in the industry is solar generator. No, yep. technically it's not a solar generator. It's a portable solar power system. It's got I'm going to argue that until the day I die. I know. <laughs> it's, it, it's got a 60 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Device. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, we're again using now the Genesun GV10. Yep. It has the custom firmware. Uh -huh. You can put a 300 watt panel on there. Uh -huh. And even though it won't pass 300 watts to your battery, it won't burn up the charge controller. Yeah. Okay. Um, it costs a little bit more to, to get that made. Uh -huh. but this will also truly charge your battery to 14.6 volts with no RFI. Yeah, we've, we've looked at huge. them on the service monitor. Uh, we've listened to them on HF. There's no RFI, and it's yeah. MPPT, so yeah, Genesis maximum power point tracking on a cloudy day or a partially shaded panel. Mm -hmm. You're still going to get as much juice out of that panel yeah. as possibly you can, just so you're able to get your battery charged. Yeah. So this one will also come in 30 amp hours again. Okay. Uh, we were doing a 30 amp hour one. And when uh, the an issue happened where the buddy pole charge controllers weren't compatible with the, the um, BioNo batteries, okay, and we haven't got that addressed yet, and it's not not hmm. fixed. That's why we went to to these charge controllers. Yeah, we needed to do a redesign using a different case. Okay, and we've done that. The panels are coming, and we'll have something on the website within a month or two with the 30 amp. Okay. The 360 watt hours. And speaking of the website, where can we find you? wwwshack in a boxcom Awesome. James, thanks so much, man. These My are awesome boxes. To talk to you. Go check them out. We'll Thank see you. Ya. All right. Thanks, man.